Fancy Webs, how are you doing? I am doing well. I'm just making a quick vlog before I film my Surrender at 20 video. I have just been so busy, you have no idea. Nick and I started to remodel our bathroom, which I was, I intended on showing you that, but my camera, without being plugged in, only has 7% battery, so I couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> but I will show you in the future. We uh, have ripped up the majority of the floor, the toilet is gone, the sink is gone, and then there was this really weird, like, the way the bathroom is set up is there's like empty space, the tub, and then there's like an empty space where the toilet is. And it was, there was this really weird like jutted out area that was maybe like 18 inches by 6 inches. It was like just a weird part of the wall that jutted out and it was almost touching the toilet. Like it was so bizarre. And so Nick and his like demolition of the rest of the bathroom like hit it with a hammer. And it turns out... Ugh, it turns out there was this awesome pipe that they just wanted to not show. And the thing is, it used to be part of like the just design of the bathroom because oh, the intelligent people who lived here before we did put down laminate flooring in the bathroom, which if you know anything about construction, really poor choice because laminate flooring is like compressed almost like cardboard on the bottom so in a bathroom like even if you don't say you don't get any water outside of the tub at all which is like sh ridiculous because I mean you put down a towel on the floor so that you don't get the floor wet but like just the condensation from a hot shower is enough to ruin that floor so the floor I always thought there was something really wrong with it because it was like squishy when you walked on it but it was just that the laminate floor had expanded and warped and it they put it underneath the toilet and the sink so the toilet and sink were like moved oh and this this flooring went underneath this stupid little excuse me this stupid wall like so we rip up the floor we rip up that piece of wall this awesome pipe it's so cool and I complain all the time because our house is like a hundred years old it's like a really old house and the people and I don't know if it was the last people who lived here the people before that like I'm not trying to point fingers but someone who lived here at some point renovated away a lot of the charm of this house like at some point this house had like really nice molding on the floor and the ceiling and all of the rooms that have been updated they like ruined the molding and they put drop ceilings in for no reason like I can't imagine like in just two rooms they were like oh let's put drop ceilings in let's just ghetto the place up so <laughs> that's on our list of things to do but there's molding on on the ceiling that the ceiling is painted and finished Ooh, is that a spider It doesn't appear to be moving, so hopefully it's just like a... I think it's a spider. Oh, 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 oh god, it is a spider. Ah, okay. Alright, spider, you just do spider things over there, and I won't squash your body. Alright, this is an agreement. This is an agreement between you and me that you're going to stay over there in your own space and I will not murder you. All right. What was I saying? Oh, so they've like renovated all the charm out of this house. Like there are very few things that give away that this house is 100 years old. There's one wall that I'm pretty sure is the original like finish on the wall and it's kind of like... I can't describe it. It's definitely old though. <laughs> and then uh, the closet under the stairs, there's a little like cupboard under the stairs that I think is very close to being original. And then this pipe that's super cool and I don't know why you would cover it because like you're, they took, I mean they took a pretty, like not that it's a significant portion of the bathroom but it made the toilet sit asymmetrically in that little cubby and it was like there wasn't that much side, there was probably only a foot on either side of the toilet and this took like a, you know, half of that space. It was so bizarre and not to mention the pipe looks really cool. It's like a big pipe up the middle and then there's like a little pipe that like attaches to it and it's painted. At one point it was like part of the design of the bathroom. But we're doing the bathroom, the spider's totally holding up his end of the deal. Um, we are doing the bathroom like a really, really light blue purpley kind of color, but like really, really light to the point of where you'd be like, is that white or is that a color? You know what I mean? And then we're doing all the trim in like a really bright white to kind of like just sort of look really like clean and smooth and stuff like that. And we're going to do the pipe. We're going to put a new layer of white paint on it and it's going to look so nice. And then we got, um, we got a really good deal on this stuff for the bathroom. We bought, the toilet we bought is just white. It's just plain white. And then the sink that we bought is like a fake cherry wood because 
real cherry is very expensive. So we got like the fake cherry wood like cabinet with like a white sink that sits in it. And then we got the matching like medicine cabinet and mirror that are also in the fake cherry in there. It's really nice. Like I'm really excited to, I don't know, I'm really excited to get it all done. Although the city is giving us a hard time because this was, this was a two family house and it like, I can't believe how like crazy the zoning board is about like re- like, because we called because we wanted to get the cable turned on upstairs because the TV is in our bedroom and there's no cable on in the apartment. And what's even odder about that is that there are two bedrooms that are part of the main house that are upstairs and then the apartment is upstairs. And what's so bizarre is that the cable doesn't work in the two bedrooms that are part of the main house. So, like, why would the person who lives there pay for the cable in these rooms? Like, they're not, it doesn't even make sense. And the cable department was like, or the cable company was like, oh, well, we can't just, like, turn on that cable because it's a separate apartment and we have to do it like it's a separate apartment. And we're like, there's rooms that aren't even in the apartment that don't work. Like, what are you talking about? So that was a whole hassle. And then there's a separate water heater and a separate, like, water gauge, like, thing. So, like, gas meter. So, <sighs> We have to have all that combined, but the zoning department is so strict and stupid. And I have a problem with this because I feel like when the zoning board department thing was like invented, you know, however many years ago, the intention was for people's safety, to make sure people weren't building on swamplands, to make sure people weren't building over pipes and stuff like that. And now it's just about money because like this is our house. We own it. We don't rent it. Like if we are, if we are living in the upstairs apartment, I don't understand why we need a permit that says it's a one family house in order to turn all of our utilities on without having to pay double. Like that seems ridiculous to me. Like if the government like facilities just worked together, they wouldn't need the zoning department because they could just freaking consult the mailman. Hey, mailman, is there an apartment one and an apartment two? Nope. Okay. Like that it's just it's so greedy because like it's just greedy. I don't have another word for it. You could come in the house and look at it and there's very clearly no one living in the separate apartment. Like our bedroom is in what the living room would be of the separate apartment and then the kitchen is just empty. <laughs> We're in the process of getting rid of the stove and the refrigerator in there. It's just so stupid because I understand the idea of why there was a zoning department but now it's just for money. It seems like everything is just for money. I was having this talk with my dad yesterday, the day before yesterday, about seatbelt laws and it's funny because I've always been very understanding of seatbelt laws. In New York it is illegal if you are not wearing a seatbelt you will get a ticket and I always completely understood that until I talked to my dad the other day and now I'm on the other side of the fence and he said you know when I was a little kid there weren't even car seats and you know I turned out fine and I'm sure there were some kids that were affected by the fact that there weren't car seats but anyways I just heard a fly what is this what is this um, and then he was saying how when seatbelt laws became like a thing, and I think he said it was in like the 1980s, late 70s, he said that they made a big deal about how it wasn't going to be an enforceable violation, that it was just going to be, oh, well, we're making it illegal as like a suggestion sort of thing, and that the only time you'll get a ticket is if you get in a car accident and you're not wearing a seatbelt, it'll be so that your injuries won't be held liable by someone else when you were the one not wearing your seatbelt, and that's the only time you'll get a ticket for it, and da 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 da. And now, in New York, they actually have like roadblocks where they'll like stop you to see if you're wearing your seatbelt. And he said, you know, as a consenting adult, like I understand making a child wear a seatbelt, but as an 18-year-old consenting adult, what business is it of theirs if you're wearing a seatbelt? Like you're only hurting yourself, not anybody else. And how come they can force me to wear a seatbelt and then some guy can just pull up on a motorcycle? And he makes such a valid point because even though motorcycles like, have to wear helmets in New York, which I don't know if they do everywhere, but they do here, like you're still not going to be okay if you get in a bad motorcycle accident. Like I'm just saying, like, it's not, it's, you're not protected at all. So it makes perfect sense to me. Like, how could a motorcycle at, be legal at all if it's illegal to not wear a seatbelt in a 2,000 pound steel <laughs> vehicle with airbags and all of these safety features? Like, how come I, it makes perfect sense? And after he said that to me, I was like, you know, you're right. That is, it is not right that they can enforce that law. And it's not that I don't want to, I would always wear my seatbelts anyways, and I, was, I would always encourage everybody else to wear their seatbelts, and I would make anybody in my car when I was driving wear a seatbelt. But the point that, like, 
a police officer can pull over an adult for making a choice that affects only them. Like, how can, how can smoking be legal and not wearing a seatbelt be illegal? Like, smoking is almost definitely going to kill you. <laughs> like, smoking is so bad for you. And not only is it bad for you, but it's bad, like, how can it be illegal for a consenting adult to not wear a seatbelt, but an adult can smoke with all the windows rolled up with children in their car? Like, who are you protecting? And it, that's the problem, is it's not about protecting, it's not about anything, it's just about money. Like, it's just another way for them to pull people over and get money, and it's sad. I don't know how I got on this topic. These vlogs are so strange. That spider is so cooperative. I have to go film my video, though. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Did you see my cat ears? Oh my gosh! Let me show you my shirt. Oh, er, oh, sorry. Okay. Check that out! Isn't it awesome? Isn't it awesome? It's not easy, you being green. I have to go. I love you all. You're in my heart. I'll see you soon. Bye, bye.